everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to Tetragrammaton. This is turn 13, um, and we are at the beginning. Alright, uh, let's jump into things. So, we've been having some pretty rough turns. Uh, maybe our luck is going to turn forward. Uh, maybe we're going to stabilize, but maybe we're going to crash and burn horribly. I don't know. Let's find out together. So we have a proclamation from Agartha, who has established a new prophet. Okay. Uh, dormant pretender gods are awakening. Cool. We had a battle in Rim Mountains. Now this is with our newest expansion party. And we have our plus now. So this one's pretty... Probably going to be pretty good. So Divine Blessing comes out. The only problem with this force is, is that this Mushushu does have a limp. Kind of lagging behind. But otherwise, very strong because they're just going to come in and wreck that back line immediately. Like everything they connect with, they're just going to Swiss cheese it. Bunch of bullet holes. So anyways, uh, easy peasy. Very good, very good. We're happy with that. We did not lose a single unit. This is really interesting, though. We get to see a battle between Fomoria and Yomi. So, uh, I, I've had a lot of diplomacy back and forth with several people in the game already. And I've discussed a, a, a fair amount of it, but some of it I've been keeping behind the scenes, waiting to see how things develop. One of the things that I've kind of been keeping behind the scenes is, is that Yomi has contacted me to try to instigate war against Fomoria. I'm not against the idea necessarily. I just don't think that I'm in a great position to do so. But it's very clear already that Fomoria and Yomi are fighting. And I need to take advantage of this opportunity to see what I can do in the near future. Not necessarily at Fomoria's expense, right? I'm not trying to... But maybe handling things with Agartha, maybe establishing my southern borders, etc. While I still can. So let's watch this. Okay, so we've got a pretty long line of unmarked from Fomoria. So it looks like Fomoria's strategy right now is basically to use their sacreds and their plus. And then we've got an interesting combination of units from Yomi. I actually really like Yomi because Yomi kind of plays like this all the time, right? It's always like super combatants or thugs or really mismatched random armies, etc. Uh, so Yomi has... A stack of barbarians. He has Inoru the Onishugu. And I actually think, are these. Are these. Mercs? We can check here in a second. We've got Minoru the Onishugu. Okay. Uh, a. Air Death One. I don't know if that's normal or not. Ah, uh, yes. So here's Rexor. These are Rexor's barbarians. Gotcha. Okay. Then we've got a. Kiyuso, the demon priest. We've got... Ooh, is this his... Uh, is this his prophet? Not. Does he have a prophet on the field? Doesn't look like it. Okay. And then we have the mismatch of... Ooh, wait. It's one of... Is it one of these... Scouts? Nope. Never mind them. Okay, so we've got this mismatch of demons, right? The little demons are the... Ko-Onis, then we got the green ones are the Ao-Onis, which are pretty cool because they hit hard with their Great Club and they have a cold blast, right, up front, armor piercing. Pretty sweet. Um, they don't have much health, but like all demons, they have a spirit form, right? I think, sorry, not like all demons, but like these demons, they have a spirit form. Um, then we've got one Oni, just straight Oni, who has the Nodachi, which hits like a friggin' truck. And then we've got three Kura Onis, which has the Nodachi, which hits like a truck, along with some ranged attacks. Uh, so this is a very interesting little mishmash. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we've already seen Fomoria's Bless before, but let's go over it real quick. It's the attack skill... 
2, Shock Resistance 10, Poison Resistance 10, Defense Skill 2, Reinvigoration 1, Blood Surge 3, Dark Vision 50, Mountain Survival. Okay. Now we can actually see Yomi's Bless. Attack Skill 2, Shock Resistance 10, Cold Resistance 10, Magic Resistance 2, Undying, Regeneration, Strength, and Blood Surge. So this is actually really interesting. The regeneration mixed in is great for a super combatant chassis, right? Um, it's great for his thugs, great for his super combatants. And the shock resistance, cold resistance is going to do a good job of keeping them alive because most of them come with good built-in fire resistance. The magic resistance is going to be very helpful as well, giving them good magic resistance. Regeneration obviously is going to be great. Undying is, I think, um, quite useful because it just increases their helpful health pool. But also, you got to keep in mind, most of these have a secondary form. So increasing their help, health pool is actually really nice. And Undying, if they get to that second form and they live, they don't count as they're, they're, they're going to come back to life, right? So that's actually really nice. Regeneration helps with that. And then strength plus two the attack skill strength plus two and blood surge make it to where they are going to be hitting incredibly hard incredibly hard so this is really really interesting so what happens the wolves come out right and wolves are great because they are going to mess up formations Right, because some of them are going to push past the wolves, some of them are going to stop to fight the wolves. So now instead of a straight line here, we've got this weird like little impetus, this little spearhead coming out, and this concave formation over here. Okay. And so what happens is they reach Rexor's Barbarians right as the unmarked up north are reaching the Kura Onis. Okay. Rexor's barbarians, Rexor barbarians, and period, just hit really, really hard. But this is this right here. This is the end of the fight. Because as you watch, Rexor's barbarians begin to spread out and meet the unmarked in a line. Line, but up here in the north, these demons are fighting against three unmarked. So what happens is, is the the unmarked curve around on to the barbarians and then the demons slaughter those three unmarked and then they fall upon the northern side and now these guys are fully surrounded right and the barbarians hold just long enough as this lower portion is beginning to wrap around which would be a big deal for the barbarians minoru the onishugo comes in and he's not gonna die He's got regeneration, he's got 21 protection, he's got 30 hit points, he's got a secondary form, he is good to go. So, he holds here while the barbarians hold for a while, and then they route, but at this point it doesn't matter because the push favors the demons. So the demons come down on top, and it's kill this guy, then on to the next one, kill that guy, then on to the next one kill that guy then on to the next one and it's just pop 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 down the line and it's done that's uh that's it now don't get me wrong it does it does uh, seemingly get close right there's not that many demons and but part of the problem is is these demons aren't dying right even the ones that get popped they're just going to spirit form so yomi wins that battle and he wins it pretty convincingly. He lost 23 barbarians, which is more than Bamoria lost, but those barbarians are just mercs. He just paid a one-time fee for them and expected to throw them away, expected them to hold the lines. The unmarked are sacreds, and I believe cap-only sacreds. They're 55 gold a pop. He might have paid... 200, 300 gold for Rexar's par Barbarians. Probably not even that much. But these 17 unmarked, that's a shit ton of gold. That's, um, what is that? That's, the, that's close to 800 gold. 
for these unmarks. Hmm. And turns of capital only recruitment. That is painful. And this is Fomoria attacking Yomi. Not the other way around. So that's a big deal. That's quite a big deal. Okay, so very interesting to witness that. Moving on. Unexpected event in Ur. <sighs> Bad luck. I, I think I'm never going to play Lux Misfortune Scales again. Jeez. Uh, a witch was caught. While suffering her sentence of death by lapidation, she uttered a dark curse over the land. Ur now has Misfortune 3. Wonderful. And Magic 2. Great. Uh, and then we get an unexpected event in Greenwoods. A barbarian horde has unexpectedly attacked and pillaged our province. Fuck me. Okay, let's watch the battle. Fuck me! That's a big barbarian horde. Now, against a concentrated... One of the things I do love about Ur is, is if you're diligent, you can very cheaply and pretty efficiently make it to where most of your provinces end up at 19, or if you're willing to pay the final little tip, 20 province defense. Now, typically, I don't, I'm not in the concept of, like, paying for a whole lot of province defense. But defense organizers can be very beneficial because it's just passively ticking up your province defense, which can give you a lot of benefits, right? Getting getting to higher province defense increases your patrol bonus. It decreases unrest, etc., etc. It's very nice. It's also nice for random events or for tiny raids, right? Makes people have to commit more. Oh, we're not there yet, <laughs> unfortunately. So, this is uh, this is not the greatest situation. Um, yeah, one, it's Deer Tribe. Two, there's not much of it. If this was closer to twenty, this might have been a situation because barbarians are actually really bad against range. Oh, it's not Deer Tribe, it's Bear Tribe. So if we had enough of these, the the Javelin Volleys would actually be potentially pretty good. But the problem is, is we just don't have enough bodies. The Barbarians hit too hard. They come in, crush everything. The one kind of fortunate from this is we do keep Nergal the Ink Elder. That's nice. He does escape. Okay. So we lose Greenwoods, we gain a province, lose a province. And then the construction in the City Palisade, or on the City Palisades on Kohnberg is complete. All right, great, fantastic. What's going on? What's the plan? Yes. We've got a couple of different movements we're, we're making this turn. We are moving um, our NC. You know what? I might just do this live, because I keep forgetting to do this. I might just do it live. NC1. That's, that's the name you get. So we're moving NC1 into Troll Peaks. Okay. Uh, this should be more than enough to handle this situation. I don't see anything here, right? Um, so the hope is, is that we're going to be able to take Troll Peaks without any real issues. It is Deer Tribe, but we should be able to take them pretty easily. Um, and then we're hopefully going to move on to White Peaks in just a few turns. Okay. So that's cool. That's great. We like that. What are we? What else are we doing? We are searching for magic sites in Gladewood, right? Um, we are moving a a Gudu down to Koenberg for probably the purpose of building a lab and starting to recruit units there. The plan would probably be to recruit a fair number of galas. Galas are pretty cheap upkeep cost. Uh, their researchability is fairly low, but they are priests, which is potentially important. And they are nature mages, which is definitely important because what these ladies can do for us is, one, they are elegists. Elegists? I don't know. They can call back our god very quickly if we need to in the late game rather than waiting for immortality. If we have... 20 of these ladies, we can just one turn, pop, god back. Great. Very nice. Super wonderful. Fantastic. Um, they, and this is actually important, 
they provide a supply bonus of 10. So you can bring a fair chunk of them, you can bring 10 of them with you on a march, and they're equal to a cauldron of broth. That's pretty good. They're fairly cheap, they are swarm casters, and they are priests and sacred, which means they do get our bless, right? So they get a little bit more protection, some regeneration, it helps keep them alive, that's fine. But more importantly, with the priest portion, they can banish. Okay? So that's that's the big deal. They can banish. We can we can banish the crap out of things. And banishment on Yomi is actually a very big deal. And having banishment against Fomoria is actually a very good big deal because one of Fomoria's biggest tactics is death, is is horde of skeletons. So um, it's entirely possible that we need to be worried about that. A combination of Swarm, which is our own chaff, and um, Banishments could be what turns the tide. So, probably going to make a bunch of uh, Galas and or Salmes, but probably primarily Galas because Galas are cheaper. In the meantime, we are recruiting units, both uh, regular Urguard, because they will probably be jumping into NC1's army, and we're recruiting Enkidu Elders because we want to have that passive um, buildup of province defense. And also because at the end of the day, Enkidu Elders are one of our best base leaders. And they're very cheap, right? So just something to keep in mind. All right, what else are we doing? We're still researching with our god. Um, I'm not moving into Greenwoods. Unfortunately, I do not have the army currently. But we are probably going to... Masanapata is heading into Ur. I am recruiting another full stack in Ur. We are probably going to do a... We're probably going to attack Greenwoods with Masanapata, Pata's party next turn. Right? Uh, it is not going to be incredibly robust. But it should be able to take 38 Barbarians with minimal losses. I say with some losses I say there's gonna be losses dude let's just let's just throw it out there but what that is also probably gonna do is it's gonna allow me an extra turn or two of recruitment in Ur the Masana Pata gets here right picks up the army next turn on turn uh, 14 right he will move into Greenwoods so turn 15 he moves back to Ur uh, and he'll be in Ur on turn 16, pick up an ar another army, go to Tesaphon, 17, go to Perenna, 18, Bell, 19, Agartha, 20. In theory, right, but that gives me, he moves here, that gives me an extra two turns of recruitment, basically. So instead of having an army of, what is this, 13 right there, and... Uh, like 9, so 22-ish, plus 3 Mushushu, no, plus a Mushushu, 23-ish. So instead of having an army of 23-ish, probably an army of 40, 45, heading up towards Agartha, and this one having a fairly robust amount of sacreds. Meanwhile, so that, that should be good. Meanwhile, we are still recruiting up here in Bell. Right, we're recruiting these guys. We're patrolling with these guys. We're up to, uh, we did put like two ticks in province defense, just because if you put ticks into province defense early, you're getting more bang for your buck out of every tick from the Inkidu Elder, from the de defense organizer. So the next tick, right, would be 10 gold, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're amassing more troops here, in theory. Uh, again, I don't know if it's necessarily going to hold, but I think we're preventing a less interesting target compared to Fomoria's provinces. Okay. Meanwhile, we are moving Nergal, who had just gotten bounced from Greenwoods. We're going to move him up to Perenna, and potentially, depending on our income next turn and what we're going to be spending things on, probably not next turn start a fort but probably the turn after that so it's still not looking great we're still not doing phenomenally right 
this is still kind of ugh, very very touch and go um if any if anyone large turns their ire on me right yomi and fomoria hash things out and fomoria comes at me that could be a big problem if kailasa comes at me that could be a big problem if pangea comes at me that could be a big problem the world state we're actually getting a decent little coverage with our scouts i'm not i'm not displeased by it i would rather have more out and my goal will be to have most of the world visible by turn probably 20 or 25 that's my goal but right now we have to focus our gold uh we're we're getting information on our border right which is very important but we have to focus our gold on building ourselves up and trying to make sure we're not just gonna crash and burn so fingers crossed on that that's pretty much it for the turn. We are completing alteration three next turn, and then it's gonna take several turns to actually get to alteration four. But but getting into alteration three does get us a couple things, right? It does get us iron skin, which is very, very important. And it actually does get us protection. Protection, being able to spam out protection on some people is pretty decently good. We could try to go all the way for Alteration 5 and just go straight for Mother Oak and Wooden Warriors. Wooden Warriors being a very good one because we can spam that out and make our make our targets. It's basically, it's just larger protection, right? And that's that's pretty nice. But I don't know that, that we're going to do that. Um, alteration 5 is also nice because... Laws of the Earth is good, but that's not what I was thinking. I might, I, I might not be thinking of the right person. I don't think, so. I don't think I. Anyways, but but like I said earlier, I'm actually really interested in getting up Conjuration, at least to level four, and I, I actually want some construction. I'd like to get to Construction one so that we can do a couple of things. Unfortunately, we've been unsuccessful in the two locations that we've scouted for gem sites so that's not great we are those were both planes though and planes are the lowest amount of magic sites see fewer max magic sites we're going into some forests and swamps so maybe that will get us a better return fingers crossed if it doesn't things might get a little dicey so all right i've been i've been blathering on for far too long um better turn than previous turns but we're still not there yet we've got to keep our eye on this conflict we've got to finalize our borders we've got to deal with the agartha situation go from there i'll see you all next time bye everybody